Hi everyone, my name is Cassandra and today we'll be going over basic engineering concepts and specifically we are going over simple machines levers. So there are six main types of simple machines and among them are levers, there's the wheel and axle, pulleys, inclined planes, wedges, and screws. Today we'll be going over one of them which are levers. So Levers are actually more complicated than most of the other ones because there are three different types of levers, but we will get to that later. First, we will start with basic terminology. When given a machine, you would have a resistance force and an effort force. So FR would typically represent the resistance force, and the resistance force would be usually an object that applies force to the machine. So it could be something that you need to be carrying, but it would just be the object in the machine. And the effort force would be the force that you are applying usually to the object so that you can have what you want to be done, done. So effort force is usually like human applied force. And then resistance force would be the force that is caused by the weight of an object. Then we can move on to the distances. So it would be the resistance distance, or basically the distance to where the resistance force is being applied. And the DE would be the distance to reach the position where the effort force is being applied. And then we will talk about mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage is a ratio between the amount of force input into the machine and the amount of force output. So when you have a mechanical advantage that is greater than one, you would input a small amount of force but receive a large amount of output force. Whereas if it was the other way around and you have a mechanical advantage that is less than one, you would input a large amount of force but receive only a small amount of output force. If your mechanical advantage is equal to one, then however much force you put in is however, however much force you receive as an output. So the ideal mechanical advantage and the actual mechanical advantage are both measures of mechanical advantage, except with different perspectives. The ideal mechanical advantage is given a machine and given its measurements, your calculations based on how much mechanical advantage this machine can provide you with. Whereas the actual mechanical advantage is throughout experiment and calculating the amount of input force, output force, and resistance that you determine your actual mechanical advantage. So currently in this video, I, will, I can only teach you guys how to obtain IMA, the ideal mechanical advantage, because we can't perform any experiments since we don't have force probes. So for levers, the IMA would be DE over DR, and the AMA would be FR over FE. So the IMA would be the distance of the effort over the distance of the resistance, and the actual mechanical advantage would be the other way around. You would have your resistance force in the numerator and the effort force in the denominator. So now we will move on to our actual different levers. Okay, so the first class lever is just like a typical seesaw. You would have the force resistance on one end and you would have the force, the effort force on the other end and the distances would just be from the specific force where it's applied to the fulcrum. So the distance of a resistance would be over here, and the distance for the effort would be over here. And so the IMA would just be D, it would be how, and the I, so the IMA would just be how we apply it in our 
IMA formula where we have DE over DR. And so depending on where the fulcrum is positioned, if it's perfectly in the center or if it's slightly to the, more to, towards the effort force or to, more towards the resistance force, the IMA can vary between being less than one, being equal to one, or being greater than one. So the IMA would be equal to one when the fulcrum is exactly in the middle. For other levers, however, it would be different, and we will take a look at it. So this is a second class lever. The fulcrum is at one end of the lever, and the resistance force would be in the middle of the lever. The effort force would be at the end. And so given this setup, we would have the DE, the entire length of the lever, or until it reaches the force, the effort force. And our DR would be from the fulcrum to the force, the resistance force. The IMA for the second class lever, however, wouldn't be the, how the first class lever looks like. Since the DE would always be greater than the DR, with the given formula that IMA equals DE over DR, then our IMA for a second class lever would always be greater than 1. And so that brings us to our third class lever. So the third class lever also has the fulcrum at one end of the lever, but it would have the resistance force on the outside and the effort force on the inside. And this would create a DE over here and a DR over here. And similar to the well, actually opposite to the second class lever, since the DR would always be longer than the, greater than the DE, the IMA of a third class lever would always be less than one. And notice that the effort force and the resistance force for both the second and third class lever are on different sides of the lever. If one is applied from the top, if, say, the resistance force is applied from the top, the effort force would be applied from the bottom. It doesn't always have to be resistance in the top and effort in the bottom, but they have to be on opposite sides of the lever for them, their forces to balance out. And that is all for today's video. Thank you for watching.